I'm back today with the Ender 3 Max, and in a moment, I'm gonna show you guys how to take this printer to the next level. But first, I just wanna say that I did a previous video on this machine, and if you've seen that, you'll see that I had some great things to say about it, and that's mainly because it performed well relative to its low cost, and it's got a bunch of other great features going for it as well. However, I have seen some reports online where people have had issues with the first layer and its repeatability specifically, and that's because it comes with a single Z lead screw, and it's got this very long X gantry here where the free end can wiggle around quite a bit if you get a machine that's built with some poor tolerances. And so I have access to three of these machines. Two of them did not have this problem, and one of them actually did. And that was after making that video. So I'm gonna take the machine with that problem, we're gonna upgrade it to a dual Z lead screw. However, finding one specifically for these machines, a kit, uh, can be difficult to come by. So I'm gonna show you guys how to take a regular Ender 3 dual lead screw kit and adapt it to the Ender 3 Max. And all you need to do is change out one simple part. So let's get started. For this installation, I'm gonna be using an official Creality kit, but they all basically come with the same thing. So there'll be a bracket for the power supply, the cables that you need, the extra Z axis stepper motor, a coupler for the lead screw, some brackets here to mount the stepper motor, you're also going to get some bearings for the top of the lead screws, the lead screw itself, the instructions, and you'll also find some hardware in the box and a new bracket for the lead screw and V wheels. In order to fit all of the new equipment on the printer, you're going to have to remove the power supply. So before you turn your printer off and remove the power supply, be sure that your X gantry is above these screws that we need to remove that are securing the power supply to the frame. Once you remove those two screws, the power supply will simply just fall off of the frame and you're gonna to have to set that aside carefully. Now we can grab the new Z motor from our kit as well as the mounting bracket and you can see that the plug on the Z stepper motor is facing forwards and that bracket is going on the back of the motor. In the kit, there should be two M3 by 16 button head cap screws. I'm gonna be putting some Loctite on these and then those are gonna go through the top of the mounting bracket and into the stepper motor, and we're gonna tighten those down. Once those M3 screws are tightened down and you've made sure that the bracket is nice and flush with the back of the stepper motor, you can reach into your kit and grab two more pieces of hardware. So these are M4 flathead screws. They're gonna go through the front of the mounting bracket and just like the other screws, we're gonna add a little bit of Loctite to these threads. And on the back of these screws, we're gonna be inserting two of the M4 T-nuts. If you've never used T-nuts before, don't tighten them all the way down just yet. Leave them a little bit loose. And that's the only way you're gonna be able to slide those T-nuts into the frame. Once the T-nuts are in the frame, you can now begin to lightly tighten down the M4 flathead screws. Leave them loose enough that you can maneuver the stepper motor down towards the bottom of the frame and I'm gonna be using this other frame member here to try and square up my stepper motor. It is extremely important that you get the stepper motor shaft to be as square to the frame as possible. This will subsequently ensure that your lead screw is square to the frame as well. Then we can take the motor and lead screw coupler. One side has a five millimeter opening and the other has an eight mil. So put the five millimeter side down on top of the stepper motor. Next order of business is to remove the V wheels on this currently unsupported side of the gantry. Each wheel is held in place with an M5 button head cap screw and an M5 nut, and you'll just remove these completely. What you will find though is that one of the M5 screws will be stuck between this plate and the gantry aluminum extrusion. To get it out, you'll have to remove these two screws here. Once the screws are removed, the plate will slide up and out and that M5 screw will come along with it. Although we're ditching the original screw, we are reusing this plate and we're gonna reuse this washer. So we're gonna be exchanging that original M5 hardware for some longer M5 by 40 button head cap screws. We'll reuse that original washer that I just pointed out and we'll put one of the new 40 millimeter long screws through it and then we'll pass it through that plate. Then we can reinstall the plate using the two original screws that held it in place and those will thread into the aluminum extrusion of the X gantry. But before fully tightening those screws down, take a look at that bracket from the front side of the machine 
and make sure that the top edge is sitting flush with the aluminum extrusion of the X gantry. Make sure it's not crooked when you tighten those screws down. Then you can take the other two M5 by 40 button head cap screws and put them through the two outer holes in the bracket. And now I can finally reveal to you the big secret to making this kit work with the Ender 3 Max, and that is you just need a longer lead screw. So you're going to get a lead screw of 500 millimeters length, and you're going to replace the one that comes in the kit. I'll put all the technical specifications of the lead screw in the video description down below, as well as a link to an example to ensure that you get the right one. Now back on the printer, you're going to be reinstalling the eccentric nut. Be sure to put it in the right way, so the side with the protruding boss will go towards the front of the machine into that front bracket, and the outer two M5 bolts will get the aluminum spacers, not the eccentric nut. The three V-wheels will be next, followed by the extra three aluminum spacers that were included in the kit. Put an aluminum spacer, behind each of the three V-wheels. Now we can take our new plate with the brass lead screw nut and the longer lead screw that we just discussed, and we can put that over top of the M5 screws and sandwich everything into place. If you're having issues getting that inner M5 screw to line up with the hole, you may have to give the eccentric nut a few turns with a wrench. Once you have all the screws lined up, you can take three of the M5 nylon locking nuts and secure everything into place. Now before moving on, one thing I like to do here is ensure that this brass lead screw nut is free to move forwards and backwards, not up and down. If you look closely, you'll notice that the black bracket has a slotted hole, whereas the brass lead screw nut is round, and this is by design. This will allow for some misalignment between the lead screw and the gantry so that the lead screw and nut do not bind. Whether it's Creality printers or these Dual Z lead screw kits, I find that oftentimes the screws holding the lead screw nut in place are too tight. If your lead screw nut cannot move back and forth, ever so slightly loosen off those two screws holding it in place. Only loosen them enough to get that forward and backward sliding. Do not loosen them enough to have the lead screw moving vertically up and down. At the bottom of your assembly, loosen off the screws clamping your coupler shut and see if you can get the lead screw to drop smoothly into the coupler. If there's some misalignment and you can't get that lead screw to drop in straight, you may have to loosen off the flathead screws holding the stepper motor in place because it may be misaligned. Take your time and play around with this a little bit to the point where you get your coupler being able to slide smoothly between your lead screw and the shaft of the stepper motor. Having the stepper motor shaft and lead screw axially aligned is very important to ensure smooth Z motion and this is going to prevent any sort of weird Z artifacts from showing up on your prints due to a wobbling gantry. When you're happy with the alignment and position, you can tighten down the screws on the coupler. Now we can take care of some of the wiring and some of the dual Z-axis kits out there will have splitter harnesses that take power right from the connector at the original Z-axis motor. Now this Creality kit requires you to go right to the main board, so to gain access to the main control board, you first need to remove this screw on top of the main board enclosure. Next, you'll have to carefully flip the printer onto its side and the bottom plate covering the main board is held into place with three more M3 button head cap screws. Carefully remove the cover and don't rip it right off because the cooling fan will still be attached by the wires. Taking a closer look at the main board, you'll see four of these four pin connectors at the bottom and the second one in from the left will be the connector for the Z motors. Unravel the new harness that comes with your kit and you'll find that one end has a four pin connector and the other two ends have six pin connectors. Take the four pin connector and plug it into the main board. These connectors are keyed so you cannot plug them in backwards, so do not worry about that. Safely route the rest of the new harness alongside the main harness of the printer and try and keep it away from sharp metal edges or things that might wear into those wires in the long run. I'm gonna pin mine down underneath the main harness and that's gonna keep it from moving around. I'm gonna leave the original harness in there rather than trying to fish it out 
and I'm just going to safely tuck it to the side. The cover should fit back on without issue. We're going to put the three M3 button head cap screws into the bottom and on the top we'll replace the single button head cap screw with the original one. Now we can start to route the rest of the harness around the frame of the printer and it makes sense to me that the shorter end of the harness should go over to the stepper motor on the right hand side of the printer when looking at it from the back and the longer end of the harness will reach all the way around the back of the frame and then reach over to the left hand side stepper motor and again this is from looking at the back of the printer. For now leave at least one of the stepper motors unplugged and you're going to manually turn the lead screws by hand and lift the gantry up a little bit and push the print bed all of the way forward. We're going to be squaring up the gantry with the rest of the frame and I'm going to be using these metal blocks to do so. If you don't have any metal blocks like these, you could 3D print some. Basically what you need are two bars of equal length and you're going to put them between the bottom frame and the gantry frame. And then you're going to use the lead screws and again turning them by hand, you're going to lower that gantry onto those blocks. And this is going to make sure the gantry is perfectly square with the rest of the frame. Although the print bed can be leveled with the adjustment knobs, you always want to start with a very square frame. This is always going to give you the best results when it comes to print quality. This is especially true if you intend to print functional parts that will fit together. And now with the gantry squared up, you can take the other connector for the stepper motor on the other side and plug it in. Use some zip ties to tidy up your wiring and this is going to make sure that the new wiring harness does not come into contact with any of the moving parts of the printer because we do not want these wires to get pulled. I've taken the excess wiring and bundled it up behind the main board and this is again out of the way of the moving print bed. The last piece of the puzzle is to get the power supply reinstalled and to do that we need to install this bracket. Now we're going to be using these shorter M4 button head cap screws along with the T-nuts to secure the bracket to the back of the frame. Now I've done dual Z installs on printers like the Ender 3 V2 and that was what this kit was originally intended for. And so this power supply bracket was originally meant to go forwards and backwards but on the Ender 3 Max the print bed will hit the power supply if you try and do it like that. And so if you're using one of these kits that was not originally intended for the Ender 3 Max, the simple trick here is to just turn the power supply bracket 90 degrees. Unfortunately, the power supply will now stick out to the side a little bit, but at least it will clear the print bed. The original mounting screw locations on the power supply will be used to secure the power supply to that bracket. Two button head cap screws will be used and the power supply with the plug and switch will be facing the front of the printer. And of course, don't forget to reconnect the power supply to the printer. Now, if you're paying attention at the beginning of the video during the unboxing, you will have noticed that the kit comes with these bearing supports for the tops of the lead screws. Now, I personally hate these things and I feel that they are completely unnecessary and they over constrain the lead screw. Older versions did not have any allowance for the movement of the bearing like I'm showing you with these ones so these are a little bit better but I still don't like them and I've never found a reason to use them. So I'm going to be removing the one that came with the Ender 3 Max and I'm going to leave the tops of my lead screws free. A lot of people have strong opinions about these things so leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below with whether or not you think I should have kept these things. Now we can power the printer back on and you can move the z-axis up enough that you can remove those leveling bars that we used to level out the gantry. At this time it would also be a good idea to redo your bed leveling and you should add some lubrication to the threaded rods. On all of my printers I typically use PTFE Superlube as the lubrication of choice. However, if there are components that require something specific, of course, I'll use what's recommended. Without wasting any time, we can now take a look at how consistent the first layers are going down on this printer. And you have to remember that this is a printer without auto bed leveling. So these very consistent, very nice first layers 
are done purely with manual leveling and this additional dual Z lead screw kit. Getting these very high quality smooth first layers is extremely important because this is essentially the foundation of the rest of your print. And this is gonna be quite a large one at about 30 hours long. Now it's a little hard to see, but there's also an extremely steep overhang coming up off of those first few layers. And then the print will obviously continue to build upwards and quite high, almost using the full build volume of this Ender 3 Max. And with the Dual Z upgrade, I did feel a lot more confident that this print would go off without a hitch. And sure enough, after about 30 hours, the print did complete and I was very pleased with the results. All of the layers looked extremely uniform in height across the entire print. And at no point during the process did I notice that the nozzle was digging into any single area of the part. The top cap of this wheel that I printed earlier successfully fit on top and therefore dimensionally the part should be good all the way from bottom to top. And so that's it for the Dual Z upgrade on the Ender 3 Max. And as you guys saw, it was really easy to adapt a regular Ender 3 Dual Z upgrade kit to the Ender 3 Max by simply swapping out that one part. And that takes care of that first layer repeatability issue. Now, if you guys have an Ender 3 Max and you're looking to take this machine even further to the next level, you're not gonna wanna miss my next major modification to this printer. It's coming out in a future video. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that. And if you'd like to support my work even further, check out my website, embracemaking.com, where you'll find all sorts of other maker content and products available. That's how I fund all this work and all of the time and effort I put into these upgrades and these videos. Thanks for watching.